We did it. We are finally on the fifth installment of my five-part series from the store to your door. Today we are wrapping things up. We just took photos in my last video and in this video we are talking about sharing, we are talking about selling that item, putting inventory away, packaging it up, and getting it out the door to you. Welcome back to Lori's Boston Found, where Thrifted is the new black. My name is Lori. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, I am so happy that you found me. I am a full-time reseller on Poshmark and on eBay, and I am in the middle of, or actually I'm wrapping up a five-part series about my entire process. I chronicled my entire process as a reseller from the time I'm actually shopping and thrifting in a thrift store to actually sending a package out the door. So that's where my title came from, from the store to your door, and I'm chronicling everything in between. If you are someone who is interested in reseller content, if you like things like hauls and thrift with me's, what sold videos, or series like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. I release videos twice a week, and I love this community and I would love for you to be a part of it. And at any time, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the thumbs up. This is a playlist and I will link that playlist above here. If you haven't seen videos one through four, you may wanna start from the beginning um, or check this one out and then you can go back and rewatch everything. So thanks for being here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Now, during this video series, I will pause and let you know if I have a more detailed video about a subject that I'm touching on and I will do that as well today. And I've been super hesitant to share with you my inventory system because I'm not where I wanna be right now. And I thought long and hard about whether or not I really wanted to share it with you and it's not anything earth shattering one way or another, but it's not at its best right now. But I think a lot of reselling is not about being perfect and it's kind of about just sharing our journey and some things we do really well and some things we can always work on. So inventory is something that I'm working on, um, but I'm going to share with you where I am right now, July 27th, 2020. Once my items get listed, which is where we kind of left off, it's very important to share your items. And for a very long time, my dad was sharing my items for me. I have about 1,100 items in my closet on Poshmark. I have far less on, in, on eBay. Most of my business I do on Poshmark. But for a while, my dad was sharing for me. I shared on my own until I hit about 700 items. And then my dad shared for me for a very long time, for several months, um, until I got up to 1,200 items. My dad hurt himself. He fell. He tripped over his snowblower and he hurt his wrist, and then he had surgery for something else. So I kind of lost my share. And in that time, when I went back to share my closet, it just got to be too much for me. So in addition to having like crazy issues with my hand now from sharing so much, I wear a brace at night because my thumb, this area of my hand is just junk now. I do use a service to share my closet. Some people call it a virtual assistant. Some people call it a bot. Some people call it a sharing service, whatever you wanna call it. I do pay approximately $20 a month to get help with sharing my closet. It's a pretty controversial topic right now. There are a lot of people talking about it, but I just wanna be transparent with you guys and let you know that as of about a month and a half or two months ago, I did start using a service to share my closet. And it's really been a huge game changer for me. I mean, I am someone who likes to share my closet at least twice a day. I still independently share to the parties um, in smaller doses. I also, send offers on my own. I don't use a service for any of that, but just for straight up sharing. And technically Poshmark's policy is against a sharing service if it's not done by a human. So if you do use a sharing service, you need to use one at your own risk. I think that sharing your own closet and the time that it takes to share your own closet is one of the reasons Poshmark loses a lot of people. It's the reason many people, I think, favor eBay when they're doing both. When people use both platforms very consistently, the people who I talk to tend to slowly migrate towards eBay because they realize that there is much less work involved. It's a little more of a complex system, but once you get it down, it seems to be like it's less work to be on eBay than on Poshmark just from the sharing aspect. 
Sharing is a super tedious thing, but it's something that has to be done if you want your items to go to the top of the feed. Now, I do have a video on sharing and sending offers to likers and all of the stuff that goes with sharing your closet and being an active member on Poshmark, and I will link that video above. I also have a really fun video on my bundling strategy, which is part of sending offers to likers. If you have people who like multiple items in your closet, it's a great idea to send them an offer in a bundle and using your bundle feature is also a way that you can have a private conversation with somebody about items in your closet. So I use that feature a lot and I will link that video above. So I'm not gonna stay too long on this topic. It's just very important to share your closet. You can do all this work on Poshmark and you can apply every step of my five parts to your business or some form of that or your version of that. And if you're not sharing your closet for Poshmark, you're really putting yourself at a disadvantage. So it's very important. So assuming that you're sharing your closet and assuming that all of my pictures have been taken and my items are listed, the next step is addressing inventory after it's been photographed. The second my items have been photographed and measured, um, the next pile they go to is this basket back here. The things in that back bucket need to be inventoried. So this morning before I started this video, I came in because that pile was about yay high um, and I actually did do a bunch of inventorying. I already started to put much of it away but this can be one of the bottlenecks in my business, a place where things tend to just pile and pile because once they're in that back um, bin and I think to myself, well, they're listed, you know, they're taken care of, they've been measured, they've been, you know, washed if need be or steamed and now they're listed. I can always grab them from that bin so I can get kind of lazy with that step. And this is also a step that my mother did pre-COVID. Um, so this is something that's back on my plate. I would love an assistant for this, but I'm not there yet. So I just started putting things away and these are some items that need to be put away. So I can show you kind of quickly uh, just a few steps and I may end up lowering the volume so you don't have to hear the crinkle of the packaging that I have. So in most cases, I do put things in the clear packaging before I inventory them. The exception is, which I've shared with you before, so these things don't get put in plastic and a lot of the pants and such don't, but I'll, I'm gonna put some inventory away with you. Start with this. This is a J. Crew blazer. Typically I would hang a blazer, but this was really lightweight. This bottom row, so M and O P are all of my blazers and I am just gonna put this in one. You will notice very quickly that I do not have a number system yet. So if, if that blazer were to sell, and this is where I always say this is a little bit of a weak link in my system. If that blazer were to sell, I would have to come down here and look through these four bins and also look on my rack. What I like to do is go from light to dark. So I guess technically I could put this blue over here, but I'm not... I haven't really been following that with my blazers. I do it more so with my shirts, go from light to dark because I can fit so many shirts in a bin, it takes me longer to search through. Um, but that's what I do. Okay, so these are sweaters. Um, also the clear helps me see. So again, this whole tower is sweaters. So everything on here is a sweater. What I'm working on is transferring, um, going to start going through each individual bin and find the item in my inventory and mark that it is in the S bin. So I at least can get it down to a particular bin. That is what I'm transitioning to. So I've started by getting the letters and putting them on, but right now this is it. So when I put a sweater in there, I look in like up here, these are mostly cream colored sweaters in gray. Um, down in the bottom are mostly like my grays and like darker grays and blacks and then I have colored ones in between. I mean the beauty of this system is that I really can take a peek in and this is why I can't imagine not having clear bins because you know if clear bins aren't as important if you have a more efficient inventory system but where I just have you know eight bins of sweaters here I have to be able to see them. Next up I'm just going to grab a couple shirts that shirt right there is more of a t-shirt and that shirt right there is athletic wear so those go in different bins i mean the system does seem inefficient but it works for me
so over here I have my lighter colored tops up here and then I go like reds and pinks, yellows, greens, blues, purples, blacks. These are all sweatshirts, been B, C, and D. The thing about my system is it works for me, but if I ever wanted to hire someone and I see the problems, even when my kids help me, it's very unreproducible right now. Like my system works for me, but anybody else who came down here would be like, where the heck does anything go? So that is what I need to work on because if I ever want even my husband or kids to help, the system just has to be better. That C2, those two bins need to get turned around. Over here is where I store some shoes. I will say that shoes are by far the most challenging thing to store. Over here, I have a lot of like wedges and loafers and things like that. These over here are shoes that have to be listed or put away into inventory. Um, <laughs> shoes are like everywhere. Like under here in this box is uh, heels, and which is which is weird because I still have some heels in other places. This is where I store ankle boots in the hallway. And this is a system I came up with when shoes were just multiplying. So I will also keep specific things like men's shoes. That bottom bins is kids' shoes, but it's just turned around. Women's sneakers, women's flats, and I store flats in other areas too. So it's not always just one place I can find things, but a couple. I have just two bins of t-shirts. Uh, kind of lighter ones over there, maybe darker ones over here. Anyways, these used to be chuck full, but I have been selling through a lot of t-shirts. So just two bins of t-shirts, and I consider those more unisex t-shirts, but they're listed uh, for women. This bin up here is all shorts. These are holiday items that still need to be listed, like very off-season, like ugly sweater things that I just haven't listed yet. More dresses over here. I have an abundance of dresses. And these are like bulky, bulky sweatshirts that were too big for the other room. So again, some a system that not many people would be able to duplicate. This is a denim skirt and I keep skirts right down here. I only have one bin for my skirts, uh, but it's overflowing. So I feel like I have like a lot of little glitches that just need to be improved on. I feel like I'm on my way. I just have a ways to go. So over here, Oftentimes I will sit here and I will pull from my bins over here, like once they are listed and I will sit in this chair and I will open up my laptop and watch one of my favorite YouTubers or watch a haul or something like that. These are all small items. Uh, oh gosh, I just sold this on eBay. This Swatch Watch sold for $50. So that has to get shipped out. And then I have like jewelry in here or little wallets, things that I don't want um, to lose track of. Same goes for this drawer. I have like some wallets in here. This was featured in my last video, um, as were these sunglasses. These I got from b and Trading. Just a Lululemon little wristlet. So these are items that, smaller items, and I use, I also keep in here my smaller poly bags. And then in the bottom drawer here, I keep my normal size poly bags. And these are the things that I will um, package up when I'm sitting here. So it's kind of an efficient system where I go from here they've been listed and then I grab my poly bag, I package it up here and then I toss it to be inventory. Did I scare anybody away with that? I just figured I would share it with you because that's where I'm at. It's not an extensive inventory system and I apologize if that's what you were hoping to see today. Once I get it in order, I promise, I promise there is nothing I would like to do more than have this phenomenal inventory video for you to see. Once I get there, I will share it with you. I went through a phase where I was losing a lot of items um, because of my lack of efficient inventory system. So I would really recommend getting a system in place sooner than later. Um, and just developing those good habits so that when you get to 1100 items, you're not playing catch up like me. Uh, um, what was I going to say? I will say that since Thriftless February, which was a series that I did in the month of February where I didn't shop and I really cleaned up my inventory. I got rid of stuff that was just hanging around. I sent stuff out to consigners. The amount of items that I misplaced drastically was reduced post Thriftless February because I really got my ducks in order. So even though the inventory system that I just shared with you isn't exactly where I want it to be right now, 
it's working. I mean, I am approaching, I'm at like 1930 something, something around there, over 1900 sales on Poshmark. Um, and I'm approaching my two year anniversary. So it's obviously working to some level for me. It can definitely be improved on, but there it is. I figured I would share that with you. Okay, we are on the final stretch here. It is now time to print our labels and get ready to package some items up because we have worked so hard. We have finally sold some of these items that we've been working on. And now it is time to print those labels and pull them from the inventory and get them ready to go. My morning ritual is to come into my office and I connect my phone memo printer to my computer and then I start printing my labels. So I always go into my Gmail account and up here in the search bar, I just type in the word awesome <laughs> because whenever you get notified from Poshmark, it says awesome news, you just sold blah, blah, blah eliminates all the other emails that I have and it just pops up the things that I need to ship. So today I need to ship um, this, be this beautiful hand-woven mohair plaid throw blanket that I got at the bins in Boston. It was brand new um, and it sold for $55. I have it listed for $85. I have an Anthropology Maeve banana shirt that was around forever. I bought it in Manhattan. It sold for only $20, less than half of my asking price. A J. Crew pair of leopard wedges some Taylor Vintage Men's Floral Swim Trunks, and a Kate Spade Sweet Dreams, Sweet Dreams Nightgown. So I'm going to print these labels really quickly. So for anybody who has a phone memo or considering getting one, I always set my settings to 100 by 150 millimeters, and I do custom scale at 97%, and then it prints great. There's label number, just repeat this. I'm gonna go right down the line, get my anthropology piece, print, print. And I do this for all of my items. And I always do this even before I go downstairs to grab my stuff. For whatever reason, having, having my labels all printed and ready to go, I find kind of motivating. And then I have my stack of labels and I then go downstairs and pull my inventory. Another important step that I do is to write down the details back of the label as soon as they come out. So I will just write on the back so that I know when I go pull the label, as I flip it over, I can see what the person purchased and make sure that I adhere the proper label to the right package that's going out. It's so easy to get confused, especially if you have multiple items going out the door. So you definitely want to have some sort of a system that helps you check where your item is being sent. And also on all of your labels, I'm not gonna show it for privacy reasons, but it says on the front of your label who your buyer is. It has like their at, it has their handle, their Poshmark handle and an order number. So you do have a way of checking in and making sure you have the right item going to the right buyer. Okay, let's go pull some inventory. Now we do the reverse. Now I'm going back down to my inventory to pull things to bring out. So the first part of this video, I was adding things to my inventory. Now I've actually sold items and I am going to pull the inventory and get it ready to package and ship. So I know that this bin right here is all men's shirts. So even though there's no letter or number system, I know those are all button down shirts for men. I know that this bin right here is where I store men's pants. So I'm just going to slide this open. Uh, these are workout pants. These are the shorts that I sold. Some of the items I have prepackaged already and then others, um, you know, depending on my time frame when I'm putting away inventory, sometimes I'll just put stuff in here without the packaging. So these swim trunks sold. It's, it's not always that easy to find. You know, sometimes I have an overstuffed bin uh, with a lot of similar looking items and it takes me a little time to find them, which is why I'm moving over my system. But having these be a pattern and I am getting a little bit low on some of my men's bottoms, that was an easy find. And I would imagine that my Kate Spade piece is also going to be relatively easy to find because I only have one bin for loungewear. So let's grab that.
Once I pull my items, I just put them on the stairs to go up and get ready to package out. But let's finish grabbing my items. This is where things get a little hairy um, and I'm laughing because as I'm looking at these bins, I've obviously pulled a bin out and returned it with the letter facing the back. So let's look for that banana shirt. I'm gonna guess it's in this bin because um, this has similar colors, but it could be in this one. So let's see how long this takes. So not bad, especially considering I did that one-handed, um, but you can see that we are not too sophisticated here. Next up, I am going to grab those shoes that I store infamously <laughs> on this recycled wine rack that has proven to be one of my favorite systems in place. Anytime I have a shoe that is narrow enough to fit in here, I put them in here and I can really fit so many pairs of shoes and I have them at a glance. So these are the ones that sold. Aren't they so cute? Um, these only sold for $20. I was disappointed with the sale as far as the price point went, but these have been around for a while and summer is coming to a close. So somebody got a really good deal on these. These are like new. Last up is that mohair blanket, and I don't have a lot of linens um, or textiles that I sell, but the ones that I do sell, I keep beneath this rack. I don't have this really sophisticated system, but what I do have, it kind of works for me. Um, these are all my jeans up here. I've shared this with you many times. I have these put up here according to size, so starting on the left with 25, 26, 27. And then over here it gets a little like 28s and then these are like 29s, 30s and 31s and 32s. You can always see that I'm always low on larger sizes. And then in these bins here, you can see I'm starting my system where I'm gonna have a letter here, A, B, C. And then on the inside, if you look from this view, you're gonna see one, two, three, four. So once I switch my system over, you know, this bin will be 3A and this one will be 3B according to that letter here. I'm not there yet, I'm transitioning over, but so like for right now, these two bins are all active wear leggings. So all of my, you know, Aloe, Lululemon, Athleta, Gymshark, those all go in here. Um, over here, I have two bins. These, this is just also from Ikea. I have two bins with just button-down shirts. And then I further divided it by putting all my denim button-downs over here and then regular button-downs over here. So again, <laughs> you know, if I have a button-down shirt, I just have to go through two bins. I'm sure it would be more precise and quicker to find if I knew that it was in C1 for sure. And I noted that in my inventory and noted that on my listing on Poshmark. Um, but again, just sharing with what you what I have. So to refocus that mohair blanket, I store under here my textiles. So I have a little afghan here, I have a tablecloth here, um, and this is the mohair blanket. So this was right here, this is so gorgeous. I was so happy this finally sold. And again, a really warm mohair blanket selling in the middle of summer. So that's everything I need to grab. Um, in a perfect world, I keep a, um, a little sourcing bag here at the bottom of the steps so that when I grab all of my merchandise that needs to be shipped, I just put it in the bag. But today this will have to do. So now I come back into my office. I have all of my items that are going to be shipped out. And then I have all of my labels that are going to go on their item. Recently, when I did my office over, I came up with a system that worked for me for shipping. And I kind of sit in this chair and I toggle back and forth between 
my counter over here in my desk. This is where I keep all of my shipping supplies. I do have a ship with me video that I will link above for you, um, but I will give you the briefer version here. This is just like my little supply basket with, um, you know, a lint roller, a, like a fabric spray if something needs like a little freshening before it goes out, a tape measure, thread and needle. And in these drawers, these little slides, I picked these up at Target and I love them. They just fit perfectly with this unit. These are my larger poly bags for, you know, sweaters and such. The center here, this is an inventory checklist. These are my decorative poly mailers here in the center. And then over here are my thank you stickers and my clear poly bags, like my eight by 10s and 10 by 13s. Um, I also keep some thank you cards right here if I sell a large bundle or, you know, there's a reason. I don't typically sell, send note cards, but I do keep them here just in case I wanna ship something out. I have my scale, which is very helpful if I'm doing direct sales through PayPal or through my website, um, or if I'm weighing something for eBay, I don't typically have to use that for Poshmark unless my order is over five pounds. And then under here, I keep all of my receipts and pens and things like that. I don't use that much for shipping that drawer, that cabinet. But this is where I keep all of my free priority mailboxes, which you can order on usps.com and they get shipped to your drawer for free. So I keep those in here. And over here, I have my um, some eBay boxes. If you have a subscription to an eBay store, you get credits. So I got like the eBay tape that you may have seen in the other basket and I got these unique sizes. Um, but for the most part, I use these Tyvek envelopes. And I also have my, um, my padded flat rate envelopes. So these are all free things you can get. And um, uh, oftentimes people ask me if you can use flat rate envelopes for priority mail. And the answer is absolutely yes. You can use any priority mail. You wanna make sure it's not priority express, but any flat rate boxes, flat rate padded envelopes, um, it all goes into the agreement that Poshmark has with USPS. So these are all of my supplies. And then I will sit here, I will, I will just chill out and do my shipping and I did not set up a U.S. postal pickup, but I typically do, and they're here around 9.30 in the morning, so that gives me incentive to hustle. So today, I will be thrifting a little bit, so I am planning to go to the post office myself, but let's get this going. So as I mentioned earlier, not everything is prepackaged in the poly mailers, in the clear bags, so I will take from my little drawers and package things up. I like to keep the sealed part on the back side so the front is nice and clean. And then I'm putting this in a Tyvek mailer. And as you can see, I looked on the back of my mailer to make sure it matched the item that was being stuck in. And then I put it in and we go. This one was already packaged, so I grab a little thank you sticker, put it on the front. This will probably go in a smaller bag. I wrote on there, you know, anthro banana shirt, so I knew which one it was. Pop it in there, and we're in business. Toss that down. And now for the shoes. This took me a while to put those clasps on, but I package each one individually so they don't mark each other while they're in transit. And then I use just one thank you sticker. And now I'm doing the other shoe. Um... I rarely use the padded envelopes for shoes unless it's like flip-flops. Not that these would have fit in there, but um, I tend to use the shoe box that I have to order from USPS. Um, and this is the box. I showed the dimensions for you, but it went by too fast. These do not come pre-taped, so I have to adhere them myself. And then I put a little filler on the bottom and a little filler on the top, I get that filler on a roll. I'll link everything in my Amazon store. And then I tape the top of this. This is also great for pickups because these boxes don't fit in my mailbox. That says J. Crew Wedges. I always double check before I seal, put it on there. And here is my Kate Spade PJs. 
I love the small items that just fit so nicely into a poly bag. They get their sticker. Those take me like a minute to do, not even. This was a tricky fit because I couldn't find a bag that was like perfect for it. I do have these larger Ziploc bags and I like using the Ziploc bags because people can reuse them. Um, I know it's not the greatest thing to be using plastic to store my stuff in, but at least I feel like some of these that zip um, people can use. Now I'm noticing it doesn't taste, it doesn't taste, it doesn't smell very fresh. So I pull it out of the bag and I spray it with my zero odor. Um, it didn't smell bad, but wool does have a little smell. So I sprayed it with the zero odor and then I left it out in the sun for a little bit. And then I put it back in the bag once it dried. So it smelled nice and fresh. Um, and this actually did fit quite nicely. And I Ziploc that, get all the air out. I always still put a thank you sticker on there. The tricky part about this was I had just run out of my um, scotch packing tape. I had the eBay tape, but I have this thing about packaging my Poshmark items with eBay tape. Oh, it's just a weird thing. So I wanted to put it in one of these bags that had the built-in stick, uh, but this box was pretty narrow. Did I say bag? I meant box. This box was a little bit narrow for this bag, so I really have to squeeze it to get it in there, which I'm doing. But fun fact, I did get a three-star rating on this. They said packaging could use improvement. So my buyer was not happy with how this was kind of pushed in there. So you'll see what it looks like. I didn't think it was bad. It wasn't perfect, but the sides of the box did bulge a little bit. So it would have been nicer. What I wanted was the, I think it's the flat rate medium bag, but see how it like is popping out. I have to really squeeze this. Lucky is freaking out because Jay just came downstairs. See how I'm really tightening this. So my buyer didn't like that and I did feel bad, but I would rather get a bad rating for packaging um, than the product. That always bothers me more if people aren't happy with the product. So yeah, that probably wasn't my best job. Oh my gosh, I can't believe like that is it. So just to recap really quickly what I went over in today's video, the first thing that I do once my items are listed is I consistently share, I send offers, I create bundles for people, I communicate with my potential customers. And there's a lot of that that goes on before an item actually sells. Next up, after things get photographed and listed, they end up in my basement. So it's very important that I make it a priority to put my items away, put my inventory away. I can put my things in clear bags before they get put away, except for certain things like I mentioned, like my jeans and my jackets that I hang. When an item does sell, I need to print my labels and I showed you my system for printing my labels and how I write things on the back of all my labels before I grab the inventory. And then I pull my inventory after I print my labels and then any further packaging that needs to be done, I do it that time. All of my items get thank you stickers and then things get packaged up and shipped out the door. Once I am done, I either, like I said, set up an appointment with USPS, which you can just do online. I know that it's not available in all areas or I bring the stuff to the post office on my own and then it is off. That wraps everything up. I hope today's video was enough of a glimpse of the final part of my entire process. It seems like it's been forever that I've been doing these videos. I'm kind of excited to get back to doing a haul, but it meant so much for me to actually share my entire process with you, and I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Let me know what you liked about it. Let me know if there's anything that is totally wacky about my process in your eyes, uh, and share with me your best inventory tip, because obviously I need some tips. I do look forward to updating and giving you a really good inventory video in the future. But that's it. If you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you subscribe to the, my channel. Feel free to go back and watch the playlist from the, the store to your door in its entirety. There are five videos that are involved in this playlist. I appreciate everybody who came along this journey with me, and I hope we all learned a little bit about the way things work with Poshmark and just how much work goes into reselling. This is not a job for people who don't like to work hard, um, but it is super rewarding and I love it so much. So thanks again, everybody. I love you guys. I'll be back very soon. Bye.